evening, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you so much for joining us for Bible study at our new time. We are starting Bible study at 7.15, starting today. So thank you for joining us. Our scripture will come from the entire fourth chapter of Revelation. It is worship in heaven from the New Living Translation. And it reads, Then as I looked, I saw a door standing open in heaven. And the same voice I had heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast. The boy said, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this. And instantly I was in the spirit and I saw a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it. The one sitting on the throne was as brilliant as gemstones, like Jasper and Cornelia. And the glow of an emerald circled his throne like a rainbow. Twenty-four thrones surrounded him, and twenty-four elders sat on them. They were all clothed in white and had gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and the rumble of thunder. And in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. This is a sevenfold spirit of God. In front of the throne was a shiny sea of glass, sparkling like crystal. In the center and around the throne were four living beings, each covered with eyes, front and back. The first of these living beings was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a human face. And the fourth was like an eagle in flight. Each of these living beings had six wings, and their wings were covered all with eyes inside and out. Day after day and night after night, they keep on saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, the Almighty, the one who always was, who is, and who is still to come. Whenever the living beings give glory and honor and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders bow down and worship the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever. And they lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and they exist because you created what you pleased. There is no doubt in my mind that God exists. When we look at the birds sing, the flowers and the trees that grow, the world and all of its beauty, we can't help but say glory to God because he is so worthy of all the praise and the honor, for he is worthy. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy.
Father God, we thank you now, Lord, and we bless you. Lord, we praise you. We magnify you. God, we thank you for another privilege, another honor just to approach you, Father God. We realize, Father God, that we are not worthy, but we realize that you alone are worthy. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us just to approach you. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless us, Father God, as we dive into your word, that your word will speak to our hearts, that we would tell men, women, boys, and girls about the value of your word. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to show us through the deep secrets of your words that those things that have already been revealed. We pray that you bless us now, keep us now, and this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Christ, Christ the Lord. the glory and give him every bit of the glory give him the glory give God the glory who do you give it to to Christ Christ Jesus the Lord hallelujah to the lamb we thank God for another privilege another honor another opportunity to come before him on tonight we come before him for he is worthy he is worthy and we give him the glory matter of fact we just allow him to keep his glory we don't want to steal or take from God's glory so we're here tonight for Bible study we are in first Thessalonians chapter 2 the last few verses of this chapter and if God's willing we will complete this chapter tonight first Thessalonians chapter 2 in the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 17 through 20. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 17 through 20. That's where we are tonight, and that's where we will, will lay our, our heads on tonight. It's a good thing to be able to go to work, go to school, go home, but it's a great thing to go to sleep with the word of the Lord on your heart and on your mind. Thank you so much for joining us, my friends. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 17 through 20. The Apostle Paul is writing here. He's writing to the church at Thessalonica. He said to them several times throughout just these two chapters how he's so proud of them, how he blessed the Lord for them, how he, uh, he's supportive of them, and how they have been effective in walking in Jesus Christ. He also point out that there are some who have killed the spirit. There are some who have, have uh, discouraged them from the gospel of Jesus Christ. He goes on to say, even some of those who are your countrymen, they have even killed those things that, that apply to Jesus Christ. They have not only killed uh, those things and those people and have not only discouraged them, but they are also the ones who killed both the Lord Jesus Christ and his prophets. So they have killed the Lord Jesus Christ along with the prophets. And God is going to get them. <laughs> That's what he says. He says, but wrath has come upon them to the utmost. He closes out that particular portion of the pericope in verse number 16, as we covered on last week. He talks about the fact that there's a contrast. So he moves from wrath to blessings. Look at what he says. He, he talks about longing. He talks about yearning. He talks about, about looking forward to, to being with them in verses 17 through 20. Today, we see, uh, just today, we've seen that there are several family members who have been separated at the border. They've been separated, and today, we witnessed two of those families joining back, women and men joining back their families and joining back one woman, joined back with her two boys. They were having a family gathering here in the great United States of America. The woman was from Honduras and she was separated at the border from her boys. And so today there was a happy reunion. There was a great reunion. There was a reunion uh, that this woman longed for, that her two boys longed for. And so tonight, uh, we're going to talk about the fact that the Apostle Paul longed to be with these. And we're going to see the similarities 
that Paul talks about as we look it up in the Greek and we see what these words really mean. We're going to see the similarities between these children who were separated at the border now coming back into reunion with their mother. And we're going to see how Paul being separated through chain, separated from the, the church at Thessalonica to the separated from these new believers and how they yearn for each other any long. Let's look at, see what the text says. Verse number 17, but we, he talks about, he talks about the wrath that's coming upon others. Then he begins, verse 17 says, but. So when he talks about the wrath for those that are against God and those who have been against God's people, now he says, but. The word but is a conjunction. This word but says, whatever has happened before, whatever I've said before, whatever was done before, I'm going to turn to a different direction now. So what he says is, but we, brethren, now I'm turning from the negative to the positive. But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence. He, has, he says that we have been taken away from you. It is parallel. It is parallel to these children being snatched away. Even little children, three and four and five years old, being snatched away and pulled away from their parents, even at the border, even in the United States today, they've been separated. The two boys that were, were reunited with their mom today, they had been separated from their mother for three full years. Don't you know that mother longed to see them? Don't you know those boys longed to see her? And there was a separation. In the text, when Paul uses the word pulling away or taken away, when he talks about the fact that we've been taken away, it is the same phrase that is used when we talk about orphans. It, it is the same phrase that is used, it's taken away, is the same phrase that is used when we are in bereavement. This word, this phrase, taken away, it, it means that we're in bereavement. We have been pulled and snatched apart. It is symbolized by a death of a loved one. Paul says, brethren, we are loved ones in the gospel ministry. We are loved ones in Christ Jesus. And now there has been a snatching or a separating, a pulling away. This phrase, taking away, it, it gives us the same separation that we have when children become orphans, meaning that their parents are no longer living. It is the same word, the same Greek word that is used when you separate people at death. So Paul says, there's a great yearning, there's a great burning. And people oftentimes say, they left this land, they left this earth without me saying the last thing I wanted to say. That's why, my dears, it's very important that every day of your life, you say the last things you want to say. I got off the phone with my daughter today, and uh, and I had to call her back just to say I love you this much. And she's 30 years old, and I'm still demonstrating the same thing that I demonstrated when she was two years old. We have to make sure that others that we love understand how much we really love them. And uh, when she was two, we always demonstrated what Jesus Christ did on Calvary. We always demonstrate the fact that Jesus loves us so much that he died on Calvary. He gave his life for us on Calvary. At the age of two, we were demonstrating that one to, to the other. So now she's 30. Guess what? I still love her this much. Jesus died for us because he loves us. Jesus gave his very life for us because he loves us. Yes. Jesus voluntarily gave his life for us. And I'm saying to her, as I now say to my wife, I will give my very life for you. Because I love you this much. You need to make sure you share, you tell, share with your loved ones how much you really, really love them. It's not, a much, it's not enough 
to work and bring home money. Yeah. It's not enough to show up and say, here it is. I bring home the bacon. Every now and then, if not often, you need to remind them of how much you love them. You need to tell them. They need to hear it out, their, out of your mouth and into their ears. And even if they don't speak, you need to sign it. I don't know how they do it, but you need to throw up some signs and make sure they know that you love them. Mm -hmm. Paul says here, but we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. The Apostle Paul says we've been pulled apart. We've been separated. It's like a death. We've been taken away in the presence. Not in our heart. What is he saying? He's saying we no longer are physically with you. But guess what? In our hearts we're still there. In our spirit we're still there. People, you hear people say, uh, I'm, I'm there with you in spirit. Let me just share with you. If you have a child, be there for their softball games. Be there for their football games. Be there for their recitals. Be there for their plays. Because they want to look in the audience and see you. It's not enough for you to bring home the bacon and the eggs and bring home the gas and bring home the car. Bring You have to be there because of the fact that they want to see you there. And when they see you there, they just light up. Because it's an expression of love. And when you love somebody, you give them your time. Yes. If you really love somebody, you would give them your time. There's nothing more precious than godly time. Give them your time. I say to every couple, there are, there are four things that you ought to do, and you ought to do it on a regular basis. Give them your time. Give them your intimacy. Give, give them creativity. And give them consistency. Give them your time, your intimacy, your creativity, and your continual love or your consistency. Be consistent about it. Over and over again. They, they need to know when the rubber meets the road, you're consistent about it. Paul says here... We not there in the physical realm, but we are there in in our hearts. We we long for you. We we yearn for you. We endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. We 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 are eager to see your face. We want to look upon. Remember now, this book of Thessalonica, this book of Thessalonians, are written to the people in the church of Thessalonica. Apostle Paul, Silas, and Timothy are the writers here. Yes, the Apostle Paul is given credit for writing the book, but the Bible tells us, even back in verse number one, chapter one, that you have Silas, Timothy, and the Apostle Paul writing. Paul is the general writer. He's the lead writer. Paul says here, we endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. Let me tell you, when you coating a girl, and some of you over 50 know what I'm talking about, when you coating a girl, you want to see her face. When you coating a boy, you want to see his face. You want to see his face. I mean, some of you, when you were teenagers and preteens, even when it was puppy love, you wanted to see her face. I used to see little five-year-olds holding each other books and walking down the road holding hands together. They want to see each other's face. When you're friends, you want to see each other's face. Your parents want to see your face. And here in ministry, we want to see each other's face. For some of us, it's been a whole year. And that's why I wanted to make sure that I touched upon every person with a phone call or a house visit or away from the street or, or giving a gift here and there as the pastor of New Beginning Church. I want to touch you with love or with a joke 
or with a with an elbow bump or or a, a virtual hug. We want to see your face. We look forward to the day where we can pack the church out again so we can see each other's face. That's how that's what's going on right here. They've been separated. We've been separated by the coronavirus for more than a year. We don't know what church looks like after Corona is gone. I would be glad when Corona goes back to hell where it came from. We don't know what church will look like. We don't know how worship. We are just, we've never seen anything like it before. We're just building the plane in the air. And if you're building the plane in the air, you understand that you don't have all the pieces together. So I, as a pastor, am not going to act like I got it all together. I want to tell you, pray for your pastor because I don't have it all together. Pray for your pastor because we are building the plane in the air. Pray for each other because even those who act like they know what's going on, we don't know what's going on. Just like we blame scientists, we blame doctors for not being on top of the coronavirus, but they didn't know what was going on. And many of them still don't know what's going on. We're learning a new variance every day. The apostle Paul says, I'm looking forward to seeing your face. Let me say to you, New Beginning Church, let me say to you visitors, let me say to you family members, let me say to you friends, I'm looking forward to seeing your face. We've been separated. See, the Apostle Paul was separated. Timothy and Silas, all three of them were separated because of persecution, because people didn't like them talking about Jesus. They didn't like them preaching about Jesus. So even the government separated them. Paul says, I long for it. I mentioned this before when in 1980 and 81, there was a, there was an album out and ch children who, who don't know what albums are. It's a big old record. It's a, it's a big old 33 or a 45. An album is a 33, a big old disc that looks kind of, kind of like a CD or a DVD, but they used to be this big. And there was an album out in the eighties by the Gap Band. And one of those songs was, I'm yearning for your love. And this yearning was a longing. This yearning was a, a deep desire to be with her or be with him. The Gap Band, had it, they had it just right for me. You would love, and, and even in the text today, he said, I'm yearning. We are, we are yearning. We are longing to be with you. We're longing. We're endeavoring to see your face. We're eager to see your face. Remember, this taken away is like what an orphan feels when his parents are no longer on planet Earth. There's a great, deep-seated desire to be together again. We in the church, we have this deep-seated desire to be together again. At the New Beginning Church, we are hugging church. And right now, we can't even see your lipstick. Because we got masks on. Some women are so terribly upset because they can't put their lipstick on. Because you can't see that when they got a blue dress on, they got blue lipstick on. We have been pulled or taken away out of our norm. And for many people, and I hear, especially with single people, it's like a death every day they come home with nobody to talk to. If you get in conversation with one of those young people that are, that are single, that comes home every day with no one to talk to, you will be there for hours because they finally got somebody to talk to. That's what Paul said. Paul said, we, we long to see your face. We, we endeavor to see you. And let me tell you, whenever Christians get to the point where we long and endeavor to see each other, then our love for each other will be expressed, expressed like never before. We ought not avoid each other. This is, a, this is a family that love each other, the church. And we ought to be a church that love to see people. We, we, planes can fall out the sky every day. 
But the reason why it's such a horrible thing is because human lives are on board. If it was an unmanned plane that fell out the sky, it would just be another black box, another piece of metal falling out the sky. But when you attach that fall to human life, it becomes a tragedy. People are important to God. People are important to you. And you ought to make sure that you love on people. And you ought to love them in such a way that you're not there to take advantage of them. Love on people. Verse number 18. Therefore, we want to come to you. You ought to have the desire to come. You ought to have the desire. It's not enough to watch us on TV. It's not enough to watch us on the internet. You ought to have a burning desire trying to figure out how am I going to get back to 4251 Sherman Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. You ought to have a burning desire praying every day, asking God, God, how is it going to happen? I have this burning desire, God. How is it going to take place? I'm sad to report that there are some who have gotten comfortable and they have come to the conclusion that I can worship God at home and you're right. I can worship God in my car. And there are some that will benefit falsely on the idea that the church is in me. But Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 declares that you ought not forsake the assembly of yourselves together <coughs> as some do. Here at the New Beginning Church, we oftentimes tell people, when you feel comfortable, come on back. You ought to have a longing. You ought to be missing something. There ought to be some pieces missing. When, when we were out of church for a full year, there were some pieces missing. Yes. Sister Davis was stuck in the house with me for, for two, two years. For the last two years, she didn't go anywhere. She was stuck in this house with me. For two full years. Can you imagine that? For two years. We didn't go home to see mama. For two years. <laughs> we didn't go see, see her mama. For two years. We went to the grocery store, to the gas station back home. And we saved more fuel and more money on fuel than ever before. We discovered that we don't have to be all those places but we ought to long to be in touch with each other. Even while we're out of church, even while we're not worshiping together as a whole, we ought to be touching each other by phone calls, touching each other by text messages, touching each other by instant messages. We ought to be interested in meeting with people. If you have a problem with people, you have a serious problem with God. If you have a problem with being around people, you better check yourself because you have wrecked yourself. You ought to love people. You ought to love being around people. I know some people can make you sick. I know some people can get on your nerves. You don't think they get on my nerves, but I love being around people. Paul says, therefore, we want to come to you. Verse number, number 18. Therefore, we want to come to you, even I, Paul, time and time again. He said, I wanted to come to you. Paul, I, Paul, wanted to come to you, and I wanted to come to you time and time and time again. But there's always something, and there's always somebody that can stop us from doing what God wants us to do. There's always a hindrance in the way. There's always, in Paul's case, there was persecution. In, in Paul's case, there was satanic opposition. Let's see what it said. He says, I wanted to come to you over and over again, time and again. I wanted to come to you, but Satan hindered us. We wanted to be there. We wanted to be on the scene. Even I, Paul, wanted to be there. But Satan hindered us. Let me tell you, the devil is busy. I know that's serving notice on some of you, but the devil is busy. Yes, Lucifer is busy. The evil one is busy. Yes. Satan himself is busy. The accuser of the brethren is busy. Mm. 
the devil is always on his job. The unfortunate thing is we as Christians are not always on our job. Mm -hmm. Paul says, I, I wanted to come. Paul says, but Satan hindered us. Now, let me just share with you. Satan has a way of hindering us because he has proven to some that he is mighty. But Satan is not almighty. Yes. This word hindered, it is the same word that we get the word impede or cut in two. The apostle Paul says, we were making a beeline to be with you. But the devil impeded our direction. But the devil obstructed our view. But the devil obstructed our pathway. He impeded it. Now, you know, there's a good thing about being impeded. It doesn't last forever. So if you're going through, thank the Lord that you're going through. Thank God that you're going through. Because when you're going through, that means there's something on the other side. When you're going through, that means that you ain't gonna, you're not going to be in this trouble always. Yes. Look forward to going through. The devil has impeded some things. The devil has hindered some things. Yes. That just means that the devil is always on his job. But the good thing about it, he's mighty. God is almighty. Yes, Lord. The devil cannot compete with him. The almighty God is almighty. He, he is almighty. There is none like him. Yes. There is no God like our God. Amen. During this season, we all have had some impeding moments. We have all have been hindered by the devil. We, the devil has gotten our attention. The question is, what you're going to do about it? Paul says, Paul, Paul says, we wanted to be with you, but the devil hindered us. The devil impeded our way. He, he obstructed our way. Verse number 19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? He asked this question. So what is our hope? So what is our joy? So what is our crown of rejoicing? Paul asking this question here. He's asking the question, so how will we get joy? How will we get a chance to rejoice, meaning to have joy over and over again? Paul asked this question. He asked the question. He says, how can we have hope? We, we need to have hope. I'm telling you, we need to have hope. Hope is expectation. Hope, hope is anticipation. I'm looking forward to it. I, I am anticipating with great confidence. Paul says when you have hope, this word hope means that I have anticipation. And I have this anticipation along with expectation. And my anticipation and my expectation comes with great confidence. I have hope. I have hope. And this word hope also translates to faith. Do you have hope? Do you have faith? Do you have expectations? And do you have anticipation? I'm looking forward to it. Paul says, uh, how, for how? For what is our hope? What is our hope? What is our joy? What is our crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Paul has really asked the question to answer his own question. Paul asked the question, what is our hope? What is our joy? What is our crown of rejoicing? Then he says, is it not even you in the presence? In what presence? In the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? What's he talking about? One of these days, the same Jesus that died on Calvary, 
one of these days, the same Jesus that rose from the dead. One of these days, the same Jesus that's now sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us, we have hope that he's going to return. We have faith that he's going to return. We anticipate his return. We have great expectations that Jesus Christ, the one who's making intercession for us, every time we sin, we confess our sins, we repent of our sin. Jesus says to God, God, I'm here, I died for him. He's making intercessions for us. He is standing up for us in the face of God. And every time the devil reminds us of our sins, Jesus Christ says, Lord, he... He's asked for forgiveness. Forgiveness. The problem with some of us is that we have become so legalistic, meaning that we have become so, so binding to, to one thing and we can only see things one way and we've been taught that God's going to get you. The problem becomes that we cannot forgive ourselves. But when we forgive ourselves, and we walk in Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ becomes our hope. Mm -hmm. What is our hope? Our hope is to be in his presence. What is our joy? Is to be in his presence. The same Jesus that died, was buried, rose, was seen, ascended, that's sitting on the right hand of the Father, we have hope, we have expectation, we have joy, and we rejoice, and one day we're going to be in his presence. Mm -hmm. That's good news tonight. There's good news that we're going to be in the presence of God. And then he goes on to say, in his presence at his return. Jesus is coming back. Yes, That's why we got to live like he's coming back. We have to repent of our sin. We have to walk away from our sin. Repent means to change our mind. So we have to change our mind about how much we love sin. We have to repent of our sins. And we have the hope. We have, and it's a crown. God is going to reward us. It's a crown. And look at how he ends this pericope. Verse number 20, he says, For you are our glory and our joy. Mm -hmm. He says, Those of you who have been led to Jesus Christ, you are our glory. And you are our joy. Because you have recept, accepted Jesus Christ, you are our glory. This word glory means this is you are our honor, our dignity. Because I was a part of your coming to Jesus Christ, I am telling you today I'm honored because of that. Let me share with you today. You ought to be about leading people to Christ. You ought to be about getting in touch with Jesus on behalf of somebody else. You ought to be about encouraging people in the Lord. And as you encourage him in the Lord, it becomes your dignity. It becomes your praise. It becomes your honor. Paul says to this church, because I minister to you, I, I, I minister to you, you have become my glory. You have become my honor. In other words, I am honored because you have come to Christ. How many people tonight have you led to Christ? How many people have you been instrumental in getting them to know Jesus? How many people have you walked by and refused to introduce them to Christ? How many homeless people have you given a track that talks about Jesus? How many people that are faking home, home, homelessness that you have shared Jesus Christ with? I never will forget. I had car problems. I bought this brand new Jeep, Cherokee, and I was riding and ran the towns and I was riding in my brand new Jeep, Cherokee. But every time the gauge got to a quarter of a tank, it fell dead. It was, it was a, a problem with the tank in the sensor that's in the tank. It was a problem with the, the gas hand 
and the censor in the tank. It was a problem because it was really on empty when it read a quarter of a tank. So the first time it happened, I um, it was riding down 610 right there by the Astrodome when it was the Astrodome. We were riding by 610 and, and, and all of a sudden the car quit midstream. 55 miles an hour went to zero. <clears throat> out of gas. Didn't know we was out of gas. Wasn't riding on fumes that we knew about. We, we pulled over. We made our way to the side of the, the feeder road. And there was a guy walking across the street. He, was, he had a wheelchair and he had a, a cane. He was pushing the wheelchair and he had the cane in his hand. I thought it was pretty interesting to note. As we got out to to get the gas can to go get gas. He asked a question. Y'all want me to help y'all push? I said, no, 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 no. We, we got it, brother. We got it. No, man, I can, I can help you all push the car. No, sir, we, we're fine now. He's pushing a wheelchair and he's pushing a cane. So we went down to the corner store, got some gas, came back with the gas can, and on our way back, this guy is sitting on that same corner. The guy who was pushing the wheelchair, the guy who had a walking cane, he was sitting on the corner. He was pushing. He was walking behind the wheelchair. He was pushing the wheelchair. He was walking behind the wheelchair just as strongly as I was walking. He was pushing the wheelchair, and he had a cane in the other hand, and as he pushed the wheelchair, he wanted us to help, uh, help him by paying him to push the car. I said, no, 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 we got it. So we come back with the gas can and the same guy that was pushing the wheelchair that was going to help us push the car was sitting on the corner at the red light, sitting in the wheelchair with the cane laying across his lap, asking for money as if he was crippled. I'm saying to you, that was the ideal time for us to introduce him to Christ. That was the ideal time for us to, to stop and say, hey, man, uh, do you know Jesus? I'm saying to you today, you may not want to confront people right now, but you ought to be able to give them a track. You ought to be able to, to say something out of the window. You may, you may want to keep three, three to six feet, but the problem is even when we were able to talk to each other in the mouth, uh, face to face, we were not winning souls to Christ. We have to be adamant. Paul says we ought to be adamant about leading people to Christ because in verse number 20, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 20, he says, for you are our glory and our joy. This word joy means cheerfulness. This word joy means delight and gladness. We ought to have joy. We ought to have delight we ought to be glad when somebody comes to Christ. The Apostle Paul says, you are our honor. You are our glory. You are our dignity. You, you are our cheerfulness. We just get joy out of the fact, and not only do we get joy out of it, God gets joy out of it. God honors us because we've led somebody to Christ. We ought to be glad about people coming to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Paul says, not only is this our joy, not only is this our gladness, not only is this our glory and our honor, it is also our reward. God wants to reward you just for leading folk to Christ because the greatest miracle that will ever take place is the winning of a lost soul. I'm convinced of it. I'm convinced that the greatest miracle is when God turns a life upside down. When God turns a life around. I'm convinced that the greatest miracle that will ever take place is the saving of a lost soul. I want to say to you today, you can be saved right now. You can be saved right here. And you can become my joy. You can become my glory. You can become the dignity that I can claim before the Lord. All you got to do is trust Jesus. And not only do I get joy out of it, not only do I have dignity because of it, you also will have 
joy when you enter into the kingdom of God. If you're listening to me today and you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. You need to get to know him. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Will you trust Jesus as your savior? Will you trust him tonight to lead you and to guide you? Will you trust him to get you from earth to glory? We all are dying. We're we going to leave here. <laughs> doesn't matter how, how, how much you work out. It doesn't matter how well you eat. You got to leave here. We're going to either leave here in the rapture, living, or leave here in the rapture, dead, but the only way we can do either of those two is to confess Christ as our Savior. If we don't confess him, when we die, we go to hell. I want to invite you tonight to, to get to know Jesus, to trust him as your Savior. Will you trust him tonight? Will you just believe this simple story that over 2,000 years ago, on a skull hill called Calvary. Jesus died for you and he died for me. Over 2,000 years ago, he prepared the way for you to go from earth to heaven. Will you accept that invitation today? Jesus died and he rose again. If you can believe this story, will you join me in prayer? Just repeat this simple prayer after me and invite Christ into your life. Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, believe in the story that Jesus died, was buried, rose, and was seen by over 500 men. We believe if you believe that story and you invited him into your life, he came in. And we believe that you're saved. You're born again. You will always be saved. You will always be born again. There may be some others of you who are already saved. But for some reason or the other, you just have not been walking in a godly way. I mess up. You messed up. I ask you today to repent. I ask you to refrain from sin. There's sin of omission, there's sin of commission. When you, when you commit sin, it's sin. When you, when you do not do what is right, it's sin. I submit to you to, to repent of those sins. I, I ask you to recommit to Jesus Christ. I ask you to rededicate yourself. I ask you to walk away. If that's you today, let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, I ask you to bless those who stand, sit, who hear. Bless us, Father God, to walk away from our sins and recommit, reconnect, and rededicate ourselves to you. Bless us, Father God, that we will not any longer reside in sin. Break our desires for sin. And bless us, Father God, to watch and follow Jesus Christ and allow him to be our Lord as well as our Savior. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who are in between church homes and don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church where we will welcome you as Paul. We would have great joy. We long in having a desire for you to come and join us in our local body. If you want to join the New Beginning Church, please inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of this church, this great church in Southeast Houston where 
Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Where Jesus is the captain of the church. Where Jesus is the leader of the church. You can join whether you join virtually or whether you join in person. We want you to be a part of a great Bible teaching church. Inbox me and let me know you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to have you. And if you've joined us tonight, inbox and let me know how you feel about this service. Inbox me and let me know if you joined by salvation. Inbox me and let me know if you have rededicated your life to Jesus Christ. I want to rejoice with you. As Paul says, I want to have great joy and rejoice with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being a part of our Bible study tonight. It is now offering time. Hallelujah. I see hands going up, hands clapping, people celebrating because they look forward to giving to the Lord. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is offering time. You can give um, virtually through Zelle. You can give by sending your Zelle uh, to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com lifting the idea here is as we lift Jesus he will draw all men unto himself and that's what we're about uh, we want to lift Jesus that Jesus will draw all men unto himself so Zell our Zell account is lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com or you can mail in your tithes, your offerings, your contributions to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We'll be glad to, to continue our worship with you. You can do that on Sunday mornings for Sunday school at 9 a.m. And you can follow us in worship at 10.30 a.m. This is our new time, 10.30 a.m. We meet in the building at 10.30 and we begin our broadcast at 10.30 a.m. For the last year, we've been doing 10.45 for the sake of broadcast. Also, our Bible study time is 7.15 p.m. Thank you for joining us for Bible study tonight. 7 15 p.m. We look forward to you being a part of our Bible study again on next Wednesday. Let me pray for your offering. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for all those who have given, all those who will give. We pray that you bless them. We pray that you increase their, their finances, increase their health, in, increase their personality, increase their ability, Father God. Uh, give them grace, give them mercy. Bless them, Father God, to walk with you and be with you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We are lifting and we are praying for Sister Shirley Bentley. And we're praying for Sister Lorraine Orr. Sister Shirley Bentley is my cousin here in Houston. And also my mother-in-law, which is Sister David's mother, Sister Lorraine Orr, the two of them will both be going into surgery on tomorrow. We're going to lift them in prayer. We want you to lift them in prayer also. We want to take them before the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to remind you, we're still doing our Bible listening. If you're behind, come on, catch up. We're still doing our Bible listening, Sister Davis. Don't, don't, don't uh, act like we're not doing it anymore. We're doing our Bible listening. So we're asking you to listen to the Word of God daily and journal what the Lord says to you through listening to the Word. So what we want you to do is catch up. The schedule is out there. If you need to schedule, inbox me. And I'll give you another schedule. We want to make sure that we listen to the Word of God and write down what the Lord is saying through every chapter. We are making our own little book, our own little diary from the Word of God. Also, our daily Bible reading is out there. That schedule is out there also. If you don't have it, inbox me and let, let me know. Our daily Bible reading is very resourceful because uh, the fact that it's tied directly to our Sunday school. And the Sunday school classes have not been very simple these days. So as you listen 
and read uh, daily the Sunday school lessons or the daily readings that lead up to the Sunday school lesson, you will be greatly empowered and impacted through our Bible listening and our Bible reading program here at the New Beginning Church. We thank God for the privilege, thank God for the honor of reading and listening to his word. If you are too busy to read, too busy to listen to the word of God, you are too busy. So whatever you do, get on back on track and let's listen to the word and let's, let's do this thing together so God can bless us together all on one accord. And if you uh, get on one accord with the word of God, God has a way of saturating your heart and saturating your mind to make you a better person and to greater prepare you for a life well lived. Amen. Thank God. We here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, "In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. God bless you and God keep you. Lord, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for those who have listened. Father God, we ask you to bless them. We ask you to increase their learning of your word. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. We pray now for Sister Shirley Bentley. We pray now for Sister Lorene Orr. We ask you to bless them. Walk with them as they go before the doctors. Give the doctors wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And Father God, we ask you to stay the hand of the devil. Bless, Father God, that the doctors, Father God, will see Jesus and that the doctors and all of the technicians and, and all of those who will be in the operating room and, and pre-op and pro-stop, we ask you to bless and speak in the name of Jesus, that the two of them will have speedy recovery, that they will stand and tell the good news of how God has brought them over one more time. It's in the name of Jesus of Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.